Hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk about levers and gears and levers have to do with the principle of moments that we learned some videos ago. Now, you can use levers um, and then later on I'm going to tell you about gears because they can be force or distance multipliers. So force multiplier is when levers are used to increase the size of a force acting on an object. So the force that you apply is smaller than the output force, okay? So it's like, for example, in the air planes. Um, you are um, driving or piloting an airplane and the um, pilot wants to steer to the right per se. Uh, he doesn't need to make a huge force in the cockpit um, to steer to the right because the airplane has a force multiplier and, uh, and his force is going to be multiplied to move the whole airplane, okay? And the force applied to the lever must act further from the pivot than the force that he has to overcome. So this is the reason why force multiplies, okay? So again, with a pilot or in these cases here with um, cutting something with scissors, using a T-bar, or using this lever to open um, a bottle, you can see that the pivot is where the force is going or where you're going to have the turning moment, right? And then you apply a force in one side uh, that actually you apply down and this goes up, right? So if you want to have a force multiplier, you can use levers. They increase the size of the force acting on the object. So your input force is smaller than the output force. And the way that you achieve this is by making sure that the force that you apply acts further from the pivot than the force that you need to overcome, okay? Again, here is a pivot, this is the applied force, and this is the cutting force, okay? Now, oh, there it is, so the force applied. I forgot that I made these arrows <laughs> to explain everything else, and then the force that it needs to overcome. Look how pretty. Anyway, let's carry on. Uh, with gears, uh, gears are used as well to change the turning effect of a force. <coughs> So gears is more to do in cars. So a small gear wheel turns a large wheel gear, and this is how you get the low gear, okay? So this is what you do. A small gear wheel turns a large gear wheel. So here it is, this one turns that one. And this gives a bigger turning effect uh, that is going to be exerted on the wheels because you have the same force applied but a greater distance. So here the distance is small, but here the distance is greater, okay? So because you have the same force but a greater distance, the output stuff turns slower than the engine stuff and this gives you a lower speed. In a car, if you want to get a higher speed, then you use a high gear. Now in this one, you have a large gear wheel turning a small gear wheel. So here we go, large turning a small one. So what happens here now the, force is, uh, the distance is larger and here smaller. So you get a smaller turning effect because, again, you have the same force but a smaller distance. Remember, the turning effect of a force, a moment, is the force times the distance from the pivot. So you also get the output stuff that turns faster than the engine stuff, so you get a higher uh, speed, okay? So this is a particular example on how you can also use not so much the force multipliers, but how you can change the turning effect of a force, um, in this case in a car, to create higher or lower speeds. And because I know that this may be confusing for you because it's just like information being given on to you, I'm going to give you this work example that I got from my QA, so it's not mine, and it says, a gear wheel of radius 20 millimeters is used to turn another gear of radius 10 millimeters with a force of 18 newtons. Calculate the moment of the force on the 10 millimeter wheel and on the 20 millimeter wheel. So again, perpendicular distance of the line of action is going to be equal to the radius of the gear wheel. So the moment is the force times the radius. So 80 times. And then you have not point not not sorry not point not one zero because you made the millimeters to go into meters. So this will give you a moment of not point eighty newton meters. And then an equal and opposite force acts on the other side. So the moment of that force is going to be eighty times, and then again not point not twenty because now is the uh, 20 millimeters being changed into meters, and this gives me 1.6 newton meters, okay? And that is it. So this is all that you need to know. It's just an extension of talking about moments and gears with an application to do with force multipliers and changing gears in a car. Up to my next video. Be happy and healthy.
Bye.